my question to you this morning is what is your story? I mean the worst thing that has ever happened to you. What's happened to you? Sister, what's the worst thing that ever happened to you? Or you've been living on the sunny side of life. I want to know someone that has suffered. Is there anybody that has really suffered? Let's hear your story. Huh? You have suffered? Okay. Alright. So, what was your suffering about? What, did, what exactly was the issue? Was it poverty? Was poverty? Was it barrenness you were trying to conquer? You were disowned. Okay. Slavery. Who else? Let's find your own case. As terrible as it is. Yes? Okay. No, you don't need to stand. Just give her the microphone. Let her share with us her experience. You have suffered. Okay. All right, go on. Is, is her microphone functional? Let's... Okay, before 2006. As my husband was a civil servant, and there was no payment for most... Okay, it's poverty. Poverty and debt. It's all poverty. He later poverty. died. Okay, and debt. And the children were suffering. I was struggling to bring them up. Yes, your, your case is, has been modeled already. Your case is a case of Jacob. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. What was it? What happened to you? Okay. One of the worst things that have ever, ever happened to me was I bedwetted for 18 years, and seeing that my dad also bedwetted that long. That's slavery. Bedwetting at a mature age is the work of an unclean spirit, so it's slavery. If we interview everybody here, you will find out that your category is within this prototypes that have been handled here and the cure the cure is what i had to go to the book of acts to find and god was with him is that your mom that spoke there you have this man this so this man came out of the poverty so the poverty didn't kill you he produced this man oh and and two more children are abroad the thing is what and God what? See, if you see the arrangement that is at work here, is is it's not an arrangement that despises process. No. Many of us expect that because God is with you, then He will just show up and change everything. No, He will administer the change through the process you are going through the change won't come like a miracle the change will be the result of a process so the point is this can you still stay with god when the process becomes tough because your guarantee for possibility is tied to your acquaintance with him whether he's still with you Normally after burials like that, on the burial day, everybody's there. And after burials, the whole family will be quiet. That's when the process begins to kick in. When you pray, and it's as if you're not hearing any feedback from God, that's when God is working most powerfully. It's process. The issue we need to probe at every time is, is God at work? Is God with me? And so even in ministry, we, we knew of a truth that God had called us. But you see, God was calling me with the message of the kingdom. And those were the days when the leading emphasis in the body of Christ was breakthrough and prosperity. It was something that was self-centered. It, it was a quest to meet our personal needs and to satisfy our longings. Meanwhile, what God was calling me to preach was what would satisfy him. You know, that's a different level. You see, doctrine is in three phases. Doctrine can be need-based. That's the type we have in Africa. Then doctrine can be function-based, where people are taught how their role in the body of Christ in facilitating the things that, um, 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 you know, activities that are built into the body, uh, releasing and stewarding grace so that other members of the body of Christ can be blessed. In the function-based aspect of doctrine is others that are blessed. In the need-based aspect of doctrine, it is me that is blessed. But in the kingdom-based aspect of doctrine, it is God that is blessed. 
So people were drunk with the first phase of doctrine because salvation is, was for you. Salvation is man's basic need. So our God also meets needs. See, the wine that the church had drank at that time was on the first level a need-based kind of service delivery. And God was calling me to preach about the kingdom, something that would satisfy the desire that was upon his heart. It, it was like swimming against the tide. The point is this. Is God with you? Because what he was calling me to do by analysis was impossible. And meanwhile, if you can, if you have the ability to fulfill what God is calling you to do, then you are not called. So the real thing about your life is that quiet statement there for God. Now, so let's do a quick test, a quick test to know if God is on your side, still in your boat. Um, can you flash back to the last 10 years and look at yourself today? Is there any improvements? The things you used to pray for 10 years ago, has the prayer points changed? I, I told you that God's pattern is that He weaves you through a process that will result in you becoming a custodian of generational blessings when i began to learn how to fast fasting was to gain mastery in fasting was the greatest challenge but it was part of the process today that is no longer a problem i desired once to be able to hear god clearly so that anytime i speak it will be the mind of god that is going forth that is no longer a problem because I had to come here today to I'm trying to prophesy that's what I'm doing this guy was going into slavery that's the context but it doesn't seem that he will ever be remembered his brother sold him off and he was off the shelf but unfortunately he went with another thing that was not obvious God The first thing that God does when he's with you is not to give you material things. He affords you the opportunity to know him and how reliable he is. And when you take the risk of trusting him, then he shows you that he's dependable. The journey of a man in the wilderness is, is the length of your journey in the wilderness is the time it takes for you to trust God. If it would take you 25 years to trust God, then your wilderness experience will be for 25 years. If it would take you five years to trust God, then your wilderness experience will be five years. You determine your wilderness experience. If you see the lives of the patriarchs, they trusted God. Because how do you think a man will begin to sow seed when there's no rain? And his reason for doing that absurd activity on the field that people will be mocking him was that he heard God speak. That's a man that is sold out. He has so he understands the texture of the voice of God. And if God speaks to him, he knows exactly that God has spoken to him and he is willing to ride, even if it looks like madness. Your journey in the wilderness is as long as how much time it will take you to trust God. Because of time, I need to prophesy to you. What he said to me to tell you, no, you don't need to stand up. He said, though thy beginning be small, because God is with you, thy later end shall greatly increase. The way you started, will, it will be impossible to relate the way you started with what God will begin to do with your life. The factor in this scripture is that God Oh, I, I didn't tell you, when we started ministry, some pastors came to me and said, I think I can come and start ministry in this town without informing them. As if there is a, there is a register where you need to go and put your name down. I also came. Hallelujah. Then it came to pass. What they said made me focus on God more intimately. Sometimes you need a challenge to know you don't have any other option 
but God, I focus on him. The one that called me, because I don't know those pastors, but I know the one that called me, so I stayed with him. I'm on your side. When I spoke to my father in the Lord about the threat, he said, don't make noise in that city. Go and take deep roots. So I came back. And then we began to pray and to, to disciple the few people that God had given to us. A thorough work. It affected my health. It affected my finances. It affected everything about my life. I knew that apart from that assignment, I didn't have any other thing to do. That was what God committed me to do. And I'm going to be faithful. In becoming faithful, I began to grow in my ability to teach and to the skill of bringing the counsel of God from the scriptures. I didn't need a big congregation to learn that. My commitment to the little people that God had given to me was enough platform for me to grow in the grace that God has bequeathed to me for ministry. And it came to so we were, we were without a signboard. There was, in fact, we stopped putting handbills. Yes, and we we're taking. We're not sending out handbills. Our meetings were getting full. But those guys that came to threaten me did not know because it was not. Yeah, we were running. We run. We ran for eight years without handbills, and the whole place was full. And my friend now came and said, "Why are you not sending out handbills?" I said, "There's no place to put the people. Let's be these ones that are here. Let's labor on them." You don't understand which kind of guys. You know what? If God is with you, all the things we were taught in Bible school that if you want to succeed, is how to do. I, I did the opposite by leading. I mean the opposite of each point. Oh, they said the way that you are going, your finances will not be in shape. What God was telling me was different from what we were taught. So I followed him. And people met us in the process and said, you are not going anywhere. You know, if you see a fetus in the womb before nine months, it looks like a tadpole. This is what happened. After 11, 12 years, we started holding citywide events. But our number, the congregation, after the event, it's still the same number. So those guys that came to me were, obviously, they will send their spies to come with feedback. The next day, the citywide event, it grew. And the impact started becoming international. It was from then I started having invitations to preach in crusades in other nations. The breakthrough was the third year of that crusade. The third year of that crusade was what opened up the atmosphere. And as God was opening up the atmosphere for us, all those pastors that came to send that threat, their ministries closed down. For God, For God, follow him. Thy later end, he said, Though thy beginning be small, thy later end shall greatly increase. You were there, you saw the place we have been transmitting from, small place. Okay, you know the one. We were there for 14 years. I was an international preacher, but that was our base. When we go to preach in places, the whole place will shake. But that place didn't grow. Because it's God that gives. See. <laughs> and God, when I now ask God, why did it take you so much? And he said, it was hiding me from corruption. So some of the things you are even praying for will, will destroy your life. Let God regulate your possibilities. He said, if I became popular too quickly, I would have been part of the Yahweh Yahoo people now. God needs to keep you for some time so that your convictions can become strong. Before he gives you visibility. Because the arena of visibility hmm, is heavily laden with distractions, with things that can pull away your soul if you are not adequately rooted in the things of God. I was in the wilderness for a long time. Many fathers in that city came to me and said, you are good, move to Abuja. Don't end up like us. And they said that with a heart that was sincere. Let's preserve this one. But I knew that my place was not Abuja. Don't leave that place. If God is with you in that land 
sow in that land and in that barren place god will cause you to be fruitful to reap an hundredfold don't change location today almost every month during the course of this year we have been receiving delegates from different parts of the world still in that that place the governor has been asking who are the people building this thing because he drives to back to his house and to the office on that road he said in fact he almost sacked one of his commissioners because an informant lied to him that this is commissioner that is doing so so he almost sacked him and when they checked him he, he, the commissioner needed prayer so he even needed prayer so he left who are the, who are the people don't worry when we are done we we'll invite him say come i have you been asking questions about the people he knows that that money is not in the coffers of the state what began to happen in the land is bigger than what the state can do whenever me and my wife walk into that arena I, it's obvious we are small but you know what what makes the difference is just that factor for god everything can go if i have god if i have god i've proven it i i went, entered london with one with one small bag one strange trouser and one shoe like this i just just came just all i went with was god because by the time i reached where i was going um the bag gave way so another bag replaced it all right that means i just came with myself and the campaign began and uh, uh, the story is not for today can you can you build your spirit can you go deep in your spirit can you invest in your spirit this capacity can you take time not don't be in a hurry don't see a yahoo pastor and envy him his soul has been snared no don't, no 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 L learn how to pray yes in time will come you will thank me for the word i said car he told us the truth I've seen pastors that wasted. I've seen pastors that built ministry based on strategy and management. Based on customer care service. Customer care services. Based on colors and blendings. You will know it was a waste of time. If that's your continent. We like colors. We like digital convenience. And if you have the substance and you add that, whoa. You have an A. But don't confuse that for the substance. So the environment and the suffering became a blessing. It made me rugged. I'm not afraid. If I pray and I come back and I tell you we are breaking this wall, believe me, it will happen. Because I know the one that is with me. Though thy beginning be small. The Lord is in your midst, and I later end be greatly increased. That's what the Lord said. I should tell you.